this time, uh, we will briefly uh, survey Protestant churches in way of the denomination. Okay, after the Reformation, we want to know how Protestant denominations uh, were established uh, chronologically. Chronologically, okay, we should know this. Um, uh, surprisingly, many Christians, including even pastors, they are they are lacking in, in understanding and 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 studying chronological establishment of Protestant denominations. Then I will give you very brief uh, lessons on this because. You should know this, because this is the way that after you understand this structure, then you will understand uh, how denominations had their own uh, their theological positions. Okay. Now, first of all, here Reformation was what year? Reformation was fifteen. 1517. This is a turning point here, historical moment. You see, prior to the Reformation, Roman Catholics and Orthodox churches. Now, these people's view uh, with respect to a, a salvation doctrine, okay, they were not uh, Calvinistic uh, doctrines. Their, their salvation doctrines somewhat universal, universal. In other words, that uh, God gave all Christians uh, chances to to be saved. Conditional upon, they should join their respective denominations. For instance, people should join Roman Catholics. Then they will be saved. Okay? And people should join Orthodox churches. Then they will be saved. That was their doctrine. Let me repeat, universalism. Okay, universalism means all human has a chance to be saved. But there was a condition. You should join our denomination. Otherwise, no salvation. Okay? Now, here... With that doctrine, Reformation took place. Now, the Protestant denominations, Protestant church peoples, had carried that spirit. They carried the spirit. Okay. Now, here, first denomination, Protestant denomination, Six years later, six years after the Reformation, Baptist people uh, formed their denomination. So the Baptist was the first Protestant denomination. Okay, but that Baptist is called Anna Baptist. Anna means again. What again? Yeah, you see, the previous time uh, under the Roman Catholics and Orthodox churches, uh, they sprinkled the water on people's head. 
Okay? Sprinkling baptism. Now, these people, they were against that sprinkling baptism. They said, look at the Bible. Even Jesus was baptized, okay, immersed in the water. It's water immersion, immersion. Immersion, that's a going down into water, okay? So they said, now we, new Protestants, we have to change baptism mode, okay, into water immersion. Otherwise, no salvation. That was their, uh, their uh, debate. Okay, no salvation without the water immersion. There will be no salvation. Okay, they, that's why they were called the Baptist people. It's a Baptist means it's a water baptism by immersion. That's their emphasis, even today. Now they say. Anabapt means you have to, you give up that previous sprinkling, you need to re baptize. Otherwise, no salvation. Okay? That we call Anabaptist, the first Protestant denominations. I give you this, okay? The founder, founder, of that denomination is Grebel Conrad. Grebel Conrad. He was a Dutchman, Netherlands. It's a Dutchman, not Englishman. So it, today's Netherlands was the first denomination, Protestant denomination formed. Now, this Anabaptist has their doctrine we call, we theologians, we call the, they are general Baptist. General Baptist. Don't forget that terminology. Okay. Now, later, we will study the particular Baptist. Where is it? Right here. The particular Baptist. They're different. General Baptist and Particular Baptist. I'll tell you how do they differ. Okay. General Baptist means it's Armenianism and also Universalism. Univer, universalism. Is this? All peoples are designed, predestined for God's people, conditional upon their acceptance, free will, by their free will acceptance. Okay? So th that's why it's a, it's, a, it's a free will. Free will Baptist. That you are responsible, your, 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 your free will is responsible for your salvation. So general, general means almost everybody has a choice. Okay? You have a chance to be saved. That's a general Baptist. You see, particular means it's a Calvinistic. You know, Calvinistic, Calvinistic is what? Even before you were born, you were chosen, okay, for God's salvation. So only those chosen particular people are destined to be saved. It's a totally different concept, isn't it? So in the beginning, Right after the Reformation, in general, took 
kinds of uh, Protestant groups, general and particular. Okay? In other words, general means is Almanistic, Almanianism. Particular is Calvinistic. Two kinds of groups. Now, first Protestant church, Anabaptist, they were not particularism, they are general Baptist. Because Calvin, Calvinism, not yet at the time. It's a Calvinism started right here, reformed right here, 1541. Okay? Interesting. Okay. Now, after this Anabaptist, Luther, Martin Luther, he's a Germany, okay? Martin Luther came up with his own denomination called Lutheran Church. That was a second Protestant denomination. Now it's very big denomination. Anabaptist people dwindled in terms of numbers. It's very small numbers now. Now, but Baptists, I'll tell you later, then in 1534, Anglicans appeared. Anglicans means entire UK okay, gave up Almost the majority UK people gave up Roman Catholics. Used to be a Roman Catholic country. And they formed their own Protestant denomination called Anglicans. The head of that, head of that Anglican church, now Henry VIII. Okay. Prior to Henry VIII, Vatican Pope was head of that church. Okay? After they gave up Roman Catholics, they formed their own denomination called Anglican Church or Church of England. The same name, the Anglican Church, also the Church of England. They also are general. They believe they are Armenianist people. Okay? General salvation as to Anabaptist. But these people, even Lutherans, did not follow Anabaptist water immersion. These people just carried their previous Roman Catholic mode of sprinkling baptism. So they are the one sprinklers, Lutherans, and Anglicans, sprinklers. Okay? Then Calvin appeared. Calvin used to be a Roman Catholic theologian. Now, he appeared and he formed his own denomination, which is Reformed Church. Reformed Church, 1541. Now, upon his appearance, he came up with Calvinism. Calvinism means only particular people were destined, predestined, and also practiced sprinkling baptism. Now, 
here. Calvin, he was a Frenchman, but he opened the church in Switzerland, Geneva. One of his disciples, one of Calvin's disciples, who learned the Calvinism from Calvin by the name of John Knox. He, he was a Scottish man. He went back to his hometown, established Presbyterian Church in Scotland. Here, 1560. So now, here, reformed denomination and pres Presbyterian denominations, they all practice sprinkling, okay, but against general salvation. They were what? Particular salvation people. So these two denominations today, we call they are, they believe in reform theology. Reform the theology means the Calvin theology. In other words, they are particular, particular theology. Does it make sense? Yeah, these people. See, I do follow their teachings, so as you. Let me repeat again. Reformed, founded by Calvin, Presbyterians, founded by John Knox, possessed Reformed theology, Calvin theology, particular theology. Okay? That all happened here right after Reformation. What a diversity. Before the Reformation, there were no such uh, divisions, no such uh, newly invented theology. But now, right after the Reformation, newly invented doctrines appeared. Now, Listen to me carefully. I, I haven't uh, written on the board, but uh, just tell me. Now, a power system within a church, would you write that down? Power system, in other words, authority system within the church. In the Roman Catholics, number one, in the Roman Catholics, power lies in where? Who, who holds the power? Pope. Okay. Now, so as Orthodox churches, power lies in their popes, but they don't call popes. Patriarch. It's a, it's a father. Okay. They, we call it patriarch. So power lies in Person. Now, here, Anabaptist people, they brought down power to lower level Baptist people. They believed church should be democratic. So, power should not be held by even pastors. Power should be all the way down to general congregations. So the Baptist spirit, even today, power should be held by civilian laity, lay people. That's a Baptist spirit. Now, Lutherans, 
did not believe that laity, laity power system. Lutherans also have their own high bishop. It's a bishop system. Okay? But bishop would not have such an almighty power as the, you know, pope. But he will share some of his powers with the, uh, his subordinate. It still is a bishop system. Anglicans, they went back to old Roman Catholic style. Okay, power lies in king of UK, England. Still, still today, power is in, who is it? Queen Elizabeth, head of the church. Now, under her, Canterbury. Okay, still, power lies in the high level. Even pastors are bishops. Bishops and pastors, they held quite a power. Now, here, Calvin uh, came up with democratic way of church management. He brought down power to elders. Elders, this elder system. The Presbyterians, Presbytery means is elders. It's a democratic way. The people will vote elders, certain number of elders, and let those elders managing the church. So elders possess power. It's like a parliament system. Okay, much democratic way. So this system was invented by Calvin and taught the system to John Knox. The John Knox went back to his hometown, Scotland. He formed officially Presbyterian denomination. Okay? It's a power system got a little bit downward to elders level. It's an elders committee, committee, democratic way. That's a Presbyterian system. So decision-making process was held by these people. Now, many UK people have discovered Elder system had some disadvantage, problems. Because those elders are so arrogant, <laughs> holding power on authority, so highly, uh, many laities, laities, lay people, disagreed with elder system. Those who were against the elder system built up their own denomination called Congregational Church. Congregational Church. As it said here, congre power, power should be within the congregations. So lay people should have power. It's, that spirit is very similar to Baptist spirit. But Congregationalists did not agree with the Baptist water immersion because of the water baptism, spinning baptism issues, they got divided. Okay? Same congregations and Baptists, same idea. Power lies in where? At the bottom level. Okay? But because of the water baptism issues, got divided. What are divisions? Yeah, that's a human nature. Here, Congregationalists, some of them, among them were, we call Puritans. Puritans 
Have you heard the Puritans? Yeah. These Puritans went to USA. You know the Plymouth. They went to. They emigrated to USA. They were the. They were the. USA. Uh, Protestant. The earliest Protestant groups arrived in USA. That's why American. Peoples are very democratic and people oriented, not power, high power oriented. Can you see that? That so these people went to America, Puritans, uh, built the Harvard University and Yale University. Princeton was built by Presbyterians, Princeton University, but Harvard and, and Yale and all these, uh, you know, all these universities uh, in those days was built by Puritans. But to bet, today, these all Puritans now denying the Trinity God Write it down. It's too bad. Very sad story. These people denying Trinity God, only believing in one God. Uh, even they even deny the deity of Jesus. Too bad. When I have a time, I will tell you more detail on this. Now here, Congregationalist. Here. 1602. This church started here in England. Now, after this congregational uh, general Baptist, Bapt Anabaptist, okay, and from, you see, general Baptist and particular Baptist, it means that churches should be democratic. Churches should be we hate those power groups within a church. The power should lie in the lay people. So, but within that power system uh, argument, the, among them, two kinds of Baptist people. They were fighting each other over their theology. You see? Common commonality among the Baptists is that water immersion, right? Water immersion believing people called Baptist. However, within the water immersion practices, uh, two groups divided. Two groups means general Baptist means against the Calvinistic view. Okay? They said, all people are subject to be saved based on their belief in Jesus with their free will. So it's a free will Baptist, we call that. Okay? General Baptist and free will Baptist or Armenianistic Baptist people. So we call them General Baptist. Later, all these General Baptist people turn to, even today, all religious pluralism. Okay, now, here is a famous people's name I just recorded here, John Smith. He's a Dutchman who formed in 1608 General Baptist. You see, over there, Baptist Anabaptist. It's the first part. Anabaptists are strong, that they're very strong people who are so strong on 
again baptized. Okay? But these people are a little bit linear, a little softer than Anabaptist. They compromise it. Okay? Splinkering. Okay, we will accept, but it's better to have water immersion like that. Now here, John Smith is a Dutchman. He performed the general Baptist denomination in Dutch, in, in, in Netherlands. Now, later in 1612, in England, Thomas Helwys, who founded General Baptist denomination in England. Netherlands was the first, and England was the second. And their teachings went to America. So this man, Roger Williams, is a very famous man. Roger Williams, in 1663. So these people, American Baptists, was started right there. So in America, two kinds of Baptist, general Baptist and particular Baptist, in other countries as well. Now here, listen to me carefully here. In the meantime, you can see a particular Baptist denomination came to Existing particular Baptist, but is this particular people? 1633. 1633. See here, General Baptist came to came into being in 1608 and 1612. Okay, now against their teachings. Although you are Baptist, some of them possessed Calvinistic doctrines. Okay? Church historians call them particular Baptist people. The founder of the particular Baptist is Benjamin Kitch, right? Kitch in England. And there's one famous man, John Bunyan. Have you heard his name? Yeah, John Bunyan. They are all particular. John Bunyan. And another famous man is the first modern mission of father. Father of mission. You know William Carey? He went to Calcutta, India. First missionary, modern missionary who went to Calcutta around, around like that. Actually, it's 81796. He went to Calcutta. So all this, and Charles Spurgeon, you, you have heard the name, okay? So all these famous people's names, they are they were carrying particular baptism, particular salvation, Calvinistic salvation. Okay? I just write them there. They have reformed Baptist people. Okay? Or Calvinistic Baptist people. You see here, always, these people are here, they, they are majority. Even today, these people are even within the Baptist minority. Now, today, the largest Baptist denomination, the largest, I would say, largest Baptist denomination in the world today is Southern Baptist in America. Yes, yeah, Southern Baptist, write it down there. The Southern Baptist uh, in America is the largest Baptist denomination, even largest 
second largest denom- Protestant denomination, not today, first largest Protestant denomination is the Assemblies of God today. They came late. However, within the Southern Baptists, there are two groups. Tell me in what way. General Baptist people in there and particular Baptist people are in there. Okay. The general Baptist people are now they turn to they turn to religious pluralism within church within the Baptist denomination. So they joined WCC. Liberal people. Now, within the denomination, this particular Baptist people, they are evangelicals. General Baptists are not evangelicals. They are liberals. Okay? Although Baptists, two kinds. More liberals than evangelicals. That applies to your country. You will see missionaries from America out of Baptist. You can see two different kinds of missionaries who possess different view on salvation. So you should be able to distinguish as we study historical, historical stories right here. Now, you see the next, it's about 150 years later, latecomers is Methodist. How many years after? In 1915, 17, 1744, so it's about 200, around 30 years after the Reformation, Methodist, Methodist was formed, okay? It's these Methodist people, they are, they are general people, Methodism, okay? Universalism people, they are against Calvin's teaching. They believed in Armenianism, universalism, condition upon free will exercise. Okay? Here, John Wesley, he, this man here, formed Method, Methodist. So these Methodist people, they were very uh, strict people, forcing their people to follow Bible teachings straight in the area of lifestyle. That's why he called Methodist. Method, you follow strict teachings of Bible teachings. So you pray, Bible study, and a holy life, okay? Away from worldly teachings, you should be very pure, the holy people. So I would say holiness movement is a Methodist teachings. Not only that, you should be diligently enough to share the gospel to save people. So very much evangelistic oriented denomination. Very sound denomination. But today, those Methodist people got joined 
religious pluralism with WCC. Why? Because of their general salvation view. You see? So the general salvation view is very poisonous. They believe here religious pluralism teaching is what? Salvation beyond Jesus Christ. Whoever believes in their own religion, you are subject to be saved. It's too much generous to other religions. Okay, now here. Here, John Wesley, in English people, now, about 100 years after, now, here's a, it's, a, it's a modern denominations came. Here, 1843, Seventh-day Adventist. Seventh-day Adventist people. Ellen White in America. I don't want to say much in this, in this particular uh, denomination today. Some people, some of these people take this as heretic cult. Okay, now, after this, this is a late 19th century, late 19th century here, Salvation Army came out. Salvation Army, it's, uh, it's, it's a part of, it's a part of Methodist, out of Methodist, some people under the William Booth, Leadership in England, Salvation Army came. Emphasis on social service, seeking for helping the poor people, underprivileged, and some. Uh, sick people, that's why they built hospital and schools. It's a social gospel oriented group. Now, today, they all, they join WCC. Okay? Now, upon that, all these churches, you know, uh, uh, pros and cons. Now, new so-called Holy Spirit movement started. It's a charismatic, charismatic groups appeared in America near the 1,900. Okay, it's a 1886. The first charismatic people. These people. In Church of God, Cleveland, it's, it's always you have a, a fixed Cleveland, Ohio. So Church of God, Cleveland, even today, it's a, it's a big denomination. Charismatic people appeared. Okay? These people, within that people, two kinds. General charismatics and Particular charismatics. Are you with me? Yes. Yeah, within that charismatic people. So many people out of these conventional existing denominations who were seeking for new movement, Holy Spirit movement, transferred themselves to that newly found denomination. So that particular denomination was mixture of all churches, all denominations formed a new denomination, charismatic movement. Okay. Also, out of the charismatic movement, later in 1914, 1914 is a year of the first World War First. 
World War I. Out of the turmoil, okay, so, so society turmoil and World War I, uh, new charismatic groups formed their own denomination called Assemblies of God. You know AOG, AG? We call that AOG. Your country has that, okay? Assemblies of God formed. Today, the Assemblies of God now became the largest Protestant denomination in terms of membership. Because that movement spread it all over Africa and Asia, even South and, and South America. So today you can see those assemblies, assemblies of God uh, belonged, denominations and churches are large members and big churches in your countries. Some independent denomination peoples practices their their worship style like assemblies of God or charismatic people. That is the very uh, attractive way of today's worship style, away from traditional traditional denominations. So today. You can see all these traditional denominations, Baptist denomination, Presbyterians, even Reformed, Anglicans, and Lutherans. You see some portion of this Pentecostal and charismatic styles of worship applied, practiced in their particular denominations and churches today. Now, this time, I just want to give you briefly, after Reformation, how many Protestant denominations appeared? Okay, I've given you historical and theological, okay, and the traditional, all these aspects of church development, okay, particularly in the Protestant church development. So you should teach this history slowly, one by one, to your congregations. Because they are wondering. Isn't it helpful? Yeah. Based on this, and we will study, next lessons, we will study how these denominations uh, practice eschatological teachings. It should be very interesting. Okay? May God bless you. Amen.